Thanks for watching. I'm John Rasmus. This is part one in a UFO series. The nature of UFOs. Disclosure is something that is spewed on the garbage paranormal radio shows year after year after year after year after year. They must think that their listeners have Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's is not a joke. But these radio shows insult the intelligence of the listeners. And these scumbags, these UFO disclosure alarmists, they're the scummiest false prophets on planet Earth in the paranormal community. I'm sure there are Ponzi scheme, Bernie Madoffs, and full-blown killers that are worse, and ISIS and whatnot, but... I don't talk about those subjects too often. This show focuses on the paranormal, therefore I'm going to have to occasionally call out these alarmist pieces of crap hoaxing, scamming schemers. They must think their listeners have zero memory and zero attention span, the span of a gnat. Because every single year, their garbage ufologist experts, experts in quotes, go on the show and uh, promise disclosure is probably right around the corner. Buy my book, buy my video, go to my website, get fished and full of spyware on your computer, we can sell your information, come to our UFO conference, we'll tell you all the details, we're the experts on UFOs and no one else is. The term ufologist in and of itself is a joke in the scientific community, and the reason being is it's no different than a psychic hotline expert, all right? I can call myself a psychic hotline expert. There's no degree required. I can call myself a ufologist. There is no UFO school or university to get this ufologist diploma from, degree from. The term is made up and fake. That being said, from what humans do know about UFOs, there are a few experts, as much as an expert as you can be on something that is extremely unknown and no one knows anything about it. So if you even know a smidge about UFOs, consider yourself an expert because even the top experts don't know hoot squat. Disclosure around the corner is a scam and a bait and a line pushed and shoved down the throats of the consumers who enjoy paranormal topics. I can tell you one thing. Not only is UFO disclosure not around the corner, there will never be UFO disclosure ever. Period. Except at the end of times <laughs> type scenario. Short of an apocalyptic end of times type scenario, there will be no disclosure on what UFOs are. You know, the Honorable Minister Farrakhan, and I use that term because that's what he, that's what it says. Huh? Huh? My UFO sign just moved. I believe it just moved on its own. Anyway, I did jam it in there, and so I, I recently jammed it in there. So it's just getting used to the weight. It's a pretty heavy sign for what's holding it up. But the Minister Farrakhan said his is the only religion. And he is the only one and his people and his scriptures that understand and know the truth about UFOs. And I was intrigued. I was like, oh, really? What's, what's this big truth about UFOs? Please tell me. And Farrakhan said, UFOs are from God, period. UFOs are God's chariots. And it's easy to make that claim and assumption. And Ezekiel, the wheels in, within the wheels of Ezekiel, like chapter 1, 
are as cliche as it gets, sure, supernatural entities of higher dimensions can have chariots with wheels within wheels, and they can be interpreted as UFOs. But the thing is, the same claim is made on the other side, and I understand, even from an atheistic perspective, why atheists would say to the UFOs are demons theory, um, yeah, right. Because I'm pretty much saying the same thing about UFOs are simply God's chariots. Eh. UFOs, strictly speaking, unidentified flying objects. Part two of this series, I'm going to be talking about the occult. UFOs and the occult. They're obviously hidden. They're obviously unseen. I'll go into depths and details in part two of this series. Part one... I would like to push all this stuff aside. The disclosure is coming soon, garbage. The there are angels, they're demons. We'll talk about that in the more spiritual aspect discussion in part two, and maybe even three. But physically, what are UFOs physically? The physical ones that physically exist. So this part is gonna focus on physical UFOs. Now, I can tell you one thing. I have seen a number of stealth bombers at night, obviously looking up and seeing the bottom side of a stealth bomber. If you Google what does the bottom of a stealth bomber's light pattern look like, you will get exactly zero results of any clarity the last time I searched it. I've seen at least two or three fly over even a few months ago. I would say about three months ago, a stealth bomber flew over my house because I live close to an Air Force base. No other reason. Not any conspiracy. I'm not paranoid. But I thought it was very cool. I got the clearest look of the bottom of a stealth bomber. It was very triangle-shaped. It wasn't a regular airplane. They're extremely obvious when it's not too dark, and you can see the shape. And the light I saw three months ago was a singular light in the middle and maybe a red light at the front some people have described a row of lights along the wings now that could be a secret stealth bomber setting do you think they don't have different settings on the lights they most definitely do which brings me to the phoenix lights the phoenix lights is one of the most famous modern day ufo events Strictly speaking, unidentified flying objects. And even Kurt Russell came out recently admitting that he is the pilot that reported the Phoenix Lights to the airport. And he didn't think much of it. He saw the Phoenix Lights from the perspective of his personal plane that he's flying when he was flying his son to and from a date, of all things. Whatever the case may be, Kurt Russell flew from California to Arizona, saw the Phoenix lights, reported it. I saw six lights over the airport in absolute uniform in a V shape. And I, and Oliver said to me, I, I was just looking at him and I was coming in, we're maybe a half a mile out and Oliver said, Pa, do you, what, is, what are those lights? And I, and I then it kind of like came out of my <clears throat> reverie and, and I said, I don't know what they are. I said, uh, he said, are we okay here? And I said, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call him. And I reported it. And they said, we're not painting anything. We don't show anything. I said, well, okay, I'm, I'm going to declare it's unidentified, it's flying, and it's six objects. Mm -hmm. I remember a sightings report. Remember the TV show Sightings starring Tim White? Very cool show. Concerning that show, there might be a conspiracy because the TV show Sightings was never turned into DVD format. There are no DVDs of, in my opinion, probably the best actual footage of unidentified flying objects the compilation ever made it's kind of the america's funniest videos of ufos is kind of what that show was is it rare for a such a cool show to not go to dvd who owns it fox i'll have to look that up because i think there might be conspiracy involving hey the government holds the dvd files of this show because it's classified now the dvd version i wish that show was fully from first episode to last episode compiled in high quality dvd formats because some of the ufos on that show including a 
orange sphere dropping white UFOs, I saw that exact thing not too many years after I watched it on sightings for the first time. So I am a witness of UFOs. My second encounter I mentioned actually on CW Chanter's video live stream a few months back. And I've never mentioned that on video ever. So check out CW Chanter's channel. But here is my recounting of the second UFO encounter I've never mentioned on my channel involving eight circular spotlight looking UFOs flying in a weird formation. And oh, you ever God. think, man, when you look up at the stars that maybe there's like some alien out there looking down at us going, hey man, you think there's someone out there going like, you ever look up at the stars? John Rasmus saw a UFO. I think I, I saw one too, but maybe Rasmus can share his uh, UFO experience. Yeah, well, I saw Alistair Crowley. Um, <laughs> I've seen a couple. I've seen a couple UFOs. He was in California in the 90s. I guess the first one I saw was on a camping trip with my class and we were easily in fifth grade. We were pretty young and someone said, Hey, what are those flashlights in the sky? And uh, there was these circular discs. I mean, what they were is they looked like spotlights for like a, a movie grand movie grand opening or something, except there was no beam. There was just the circles of light. Right. And there, and there were eight of them. And they were going like this in a weird pattern. And uh, all the kids shine their flashlights to try to reproduce it, and we couldn't. It was some type of weird, totally flat, two-dimensional almost beams of light going in a pattern. And to this day, I have no idea what that was. It looked kind of like a laser show with no beams just the end of the beam, kind of like a Batman signal. I was just like out the beam and it danced and there was eight of them and it went on for about 30 minutes. And uh, I think we went to sleep. I don't think we saw it stop. It was very weird. Yeah. I've Ooh. had the same thing in Maine though. And it, you got to go where the stars are kind of clear. And um, I think, at the right time like i've seen weird stuff just like that you know and uh one time i saw one that was uh kind of like invisible almost like a gyrocopter if you know what that is mm -hmm. an invisible gyrocopter but i could see it, it was like metalloid invisible invisible and as soon as i waved to it it took off like a million miles an hour towards the sunset it was cr kind of crazy so i've seen some crazy stuff in the sky too and i do believe that um these phenomena exist, whether or not they're from humans or from extraterrestrials. I don't know. You know, I think, I think most of them, most of them are humans. And some, you know, yeah. for extraterrestrials, it used to be human, right? There's also yeah. some wacky, wonderful theories out there. Who knows? Who knows? You see an unidentified flying object. Here's what you know: you saw a flying object. Right. You don't know what it is. It's unidentified. To this day, I don't know what it was. I could tell you a funny story about the Montauk Project. Preston B. Nichols claims the old term before the Roswell crash, before UFO was used by the government, Preston B. Nichols claims the term flying unknown was used, and the acronym was FU, as a joke. I could see flying foo, flying foo fighters, or something like that, but I've extensively searched for flying unknown as the acronym used by the government. And I've found zero resources, only further proving Preston B. Nichols kind of makes stuff up off the top of his head. He's an elaborate story weaver. If anyone can find proof of flying unknown other than my short-lived show, it was easy to get it because no one had it. It was easy to get flyingunknown.com. It was easy to get flying unknown at gmail.com because nobody had it nobody had it because it was never used because preston b nichols wasn't exactly telling the truth the phoenix lights let's go back to the phoenix lights on sightings i saw a really good analysis of the phoenix lights and when they brought up the contrast and they had the full film they had a high quality of of the best person that filmed it multiple people filmed it 
one of the most widespread sightings, and they saw that the Phoenix lights themselves, however many were stringed along, that they never disappeared. The contrasted analysis on sightings proved that they simply fell behind the mountain range. They fell behind the mountain line because they never mysteriously went off into space. They never did any alien maneuvers. And I searched it enough to find out something very interesting about it. I saw a local news report on Phoenix News claiming that someone it lives next to the guy who released the Phoenix Lights. And he claimed that his neighbor admitted the Phoenix Lights were Chinese lanterns strung together with fishing line, period. Now, if you look at Chinese lanterns, Google that. Take a look at some Chinese lanterns videos. I'll show one right here. Does this or does this not look exactly like the lights of the Phoenix Lights? Chinese lanterns exactly match it. They weren't flares. Flares don't float in the sky unless they have some Chinese lantern floating type device. Nope. Chinese lanterns connected with simplistic fishing line is the actual truth behind the Phoenix Lights, in my opinion. The reason that neighbor didn't out the name of his friend is because his friend said, oh crap, I did this as a joke. Maybe I'm an Art Bell fan. Art Bell actually asked his audience to spend a minute concentrating on summoning UFOs or proof of UFOs. And I'm going to talk about the UFO summoner in part two. But Art Bell's experiment, he considered a success because shortly after the Phoenix Lights magically appeared. Could have been a coincidence, but this Phoenix resident released who knows how many big string of Chinese lanterns from his backyard. They floated above the mountain range and the Air Force was called in because they had no idea what this is. Thanks to Kurt Russell, of all people, reporting it to the local airport. But even aside from his reporting, there were many people from the ground filming it and reporting it as well. I saw the footage of the lights fall behind the mountain range, proving they were simply a string of lights that lost their ability to stay in the air. Chinese lanterns are paper, really light paper lanterns. Hot air from the candle floats these paper lanterns in the sky, and it's simply a mechanism of hot air rising, just like a hot air balloon. And when the candle burns out, uh, when the the air gets cool, the thing crashes down, just like a hot air balloon. I'm convinced 100% the Phoenix lights were Chinese lanterns. This Phoenix resident didn't come forward for the singular reason he was freaked out that the FAA would fine him $100,000, or whatever the case may be. Look it up. Shooting random stuff into the air without the permission exclusively you know how many laws that breaks? It breaks many laws. The guy could have been jailed, fined, who knows what. But staying anonymous is the only way he could stay safe from a huge fine or being thrown in jail. Chances are they would only throw him in jail for a very short period of time, like one day. The guy that put balloons on his lawn chair and floated in the sky and shot the balloons with a shotgun to come down, that guy broke similar laws but concerning the phoenix lights i would say it would have been considered even more dangerous because it was strung out across such a large area any air traffic wouldn't feel safe flying through that not knowing it's simply chinese lanterns connected to fishing line they might think it's a bunch of airplanes a bunch of helicopters they wouldn't know what it is i guarantee traffic air traffic was navigated around that and the Air Force did bring out, I believe, a top secret stealth bomber. Possibly the most top secret stealth bomber we have because it had lights all along the wings. Or perhaps it's one that we already know about but simply had a secret light setting of let's freak out these UFOs with our own UFO. So the Air Force investigated. They flew up close to it. They probably saw firsthand it was Chinese lanterns connected with fishing line. And I guarantee you 
there is an Air Force file somewhere that says Chinese lanterns. There is a good chance the Air Force actually collected the fallen Chinese lanterns that fell behind the mountainside. Either way, they've probably thoroughly disintegrated by now. So that's what the Phoenix lights were. That's the big mystery. It's not interesting. People like the mystery. But physically speaking, UFOs, what are they? I think they're a combination of our military craft and other countries' military craft. But I think most of the time, these physical UFOs are military craft. Why doesn't the government correct the record and say, oh, by the way, that was us and our secret stealth bomber we've been developing for 50 years. It wasn't an extraterrestrial flying object. Uh, the reason the freaking Air Force doesn't correct when the media or the papers or the people think it's an extraterrestrial alien craft is because they, they love that confusion. They love it and they feed off of it. Matter of fact, it helps in the war against the enemies they use these craft with. If the enemy thinks a freaking extraterrestrial craft is coming, they're going to be so caught off guard, they're not going to know that just a regular American bomb is going to blow them away. It makes for a great cover, and most definitely they're going to keep that cover under wraps. A UFO story also keeps that the government secret bomber is in the area under wraps. There are many pros for the military keeping the UFO story under wraps and virtually zero cons for them not keeping that story in the realm of mystery as opposed to, by the way, uh, here's our super secret craft. Area 51, in my opinion, doesn't have any extraterrestrials and never has. But it has a few secret bombers, if it still does. And uh, maybe they moved it to an actual secret facility after that facility's cover was blown open, wide open. Bob Lazar claimed they were flying saucers reverse engineered from extraterrestrial craft in Area 51. In a future episode in this the Nature of UFOs series, I will cover Bob Lazar. The Roswell crash in Roswell, New Mexico in 1947 is an extremely breaking point. The term flying saucer and even UFO came about because of the publicity of that story. Everyone knows about it. It's very famous. Believe it or not, I came across what I believe is some breaking new evidence, a new lead, which I luckily came across, a small YouTuber coming across Roswell evidence, proving or disproving Roswell. It's pretty big, pretty big. Now, in a court of law, would it hold up? It really depends on the judge and it depends on the circumstance. No one broke any laws telling Roswell stories. Even if they lie about what a military officer said, that guy's dead by now. So, hearsay. Uh, I don't think any laws would be broken uh, concerning the proof that I have. I came across some proof that the Roswell story is either true or false. Very interesting piece of information. I don't have a piece of the ship or anything like that. That would be cool. But I have something kind of close to a piece of the ship concerning proof. And I've wanted to share it for years now. I've held on to the story for years. And I'm going to release it at the end of this The Nature of UFOs series. At the very end. The finale will be my opinion. I'll try to back it up with something. But it's going to be this piece of Roswell information I came across. Information so rare, you can't find it on Google, I guarantee you. So it's pretty cool. If you can't find it on Google, it's a pretty cool piece of information. Information is valuable. You know, there's a video game called Star Control 2 where there's an extraterrestrial and he's pretty much the richest 
most enterprising extraterrestrial in the universe. And he buys and sells, guess what? Information. That's it. He buys and sells information. Specifically, he likes to buy it. And so information isn't useless. I could write a book on this piece of evidence. But I'd rather just give it away for free. I'm not big into the Roswell case. I'm not an expert at Roswell, but I've read and seen and heard many documentaries and experts on the subject. Stanton Friedman, he is one of the foremost experts on Roswell. And I guarantee you, Stanton Friedman, there's a good chance he doesn't know about this information. It's that obscure. It's that hard to find. If I told this information to Stanton Friedman, he, he would probably go, wow, that's, that's actually interesting. I would like to follow up on that. That's how interesting this breaking Roswell information is. So I'm going to hold it for the end. I'm going to do a little bit of research to see if anyone else has heard about it. From what I've seen so far, no one on Google has ever mentioned it ever. So until next time, I thank you for watching. Part 2 in The Nature of UFOs is coming soon. Until next time, this has been John Rasmus with John Rasmus Presents. In coordination with Hoax Hunter and Occult Unmasked, Pyramidical, you name it, youtube.com slash hoaxhunter. Be, Be seeing, seeing you. you.